Hey, what's up everybody? Johannes here. Welcome back to Moser Mini Masterclass and to the second video of our 10 part mini course, how to learn a new piece. And today we're going to focus on how to break up a piece into small chunks, uh, learn these chunks individually, and then putting them back together to create the bigger picture. When you open up um, a piece for the first time, you might be overwhelmed by just how much music you are supposed to learn or how difficult it seems. And it seems like a mountain that is impossible to conquer. But if you take that mountain and if you chisel off uh, small uh, stones uh, that seem manageable, uh, at the end of the day, the big mountain is just gonna be, you know, a whole lot of small um, little stones and can put them back together again. I don't know if that if that image makes any sense, but there you have it. So I think most of us already do that, right? If you have a uh, coherent passage, let's say it belongs together musically, or if you have a passage that belongs together in tempo, it's very easy to take that as one cluster and to practice that uh, piece of music individually. I think that is pretty clear. The point that most people miss, I think, is how to put all of these small chunks back together. As you progress with your tempo, it is important that at a certain point you unify sections so that these sections don't stay by themselves, but that you create a picture that is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If I practice a piece and I have a very difficult section that I can only do with BPM of 40, and then I have another section that I can do already with 65, I'll try to bring up the difficult section to, let's say, 70, and the easier passage as well to 70, and then I unify those passages. It is important when you unify two passages to a bigger chunk that you go back in tempo again. And you don't think that you have the ability to just play through both passages, um, because you haven't practiced the connection yet between the two. And that is crucial. So let's say I've practiced um, until 70. I will go back to, let's say, 60 or even 55, just to jump back, feel very comfortable. And once you practice the connecting tissue, uh, your progress again will go very fast. What I find personally very helpful is that you keep a practicing journal uh, where I personally uh, write down my progress of each sort of section that I practice. So let's take a look at my practicing book. As you can see, this is gonna be a stroll through the season. Rudoslavsky Concerto, uh, page number four, um, episode two, three, four, and then figure 90, and then the coda, which is uh, 137. Um, and this was like a warm up, so you can see that I wasn't struggling too much and I didn't have to unify too much. Sassas number one, I still like to do some things with metronome there. This is more complex. This is the Philip Mines Concerto. Here's a prime example of unification. So I practiced individual bars, bar 69, bar 70, 71 to 73, 74 to 75, and 76. And I had to practice very slowly because it's very complex. This I had to start slower than the others. So all of these I started with 30. This I started with 20. And once I hit uh, 50 or 45, um, I unified them and I went back to 30 and 40. Dvorak I also uh, come back to with metronome. Uh, believe it or not, I mean, I've played this hundreds of times, but uh, it's always good to just clean it up. I always come back to this kind of practicing. I find it very, very helpful. So you wanna make sure that you don't always start again from scratch each day. But let's say you made a progress going from 40 beats per minute to 55. I write down 55 into my practice journal, and the next day, I might not start at 55 again, but I go slightly back. So let's say I go back to 50, and I try to make progress to 60. The next day, I will maybe start at 56 and try to go to 64. That kind of try to overlap uh, the progress um, in a way that I always jump back slightly um, so that my brain is fully in control and that I don't run into the problem of almost making it. Because if I program into my system that I almost make the passage, um, that feeling of uneasiness and unrest is going to go into the passage. This is something that is not talked about enough. Each passage has its own memory because 
each passage is connected to your muscles and muscles have their own memory. If I have a very uncomfortable experience with a certain passage over and over again, that experience is practiced into the section and it almost resurfaces like a phantom pain, if you know what I mean. So um, I have to make sure that when I practice a section that I practice it so that it feels comfortable. Pressing forward in progress is not always a good idea. Just practice until a point where you feel, okay, now I'm really exiting my comfort zone um, and go back a notch. All right, I wanted to show you something very special. The Schoenberg Cello Concerto is probably one of the hardest pieces I ever had to put together. So hard, in fact, that I had to divide my practicing into individual bars. So for example, here I have 41 to 43, here I have 35 to 38, 34 by itself, 33 by itself, bar 27 to 29, and so on. So as we can see here, bar 27 to 29 was probably very challenging. So I started with 16th note equals 80. And up here, 41 to 43, probably not as challenging. I started out with quarter note equals 50. Uh, now, once I uh, worked my way up until I hit 120 with, with those three, I unified them, but I jumped back to 80. So then I worked my way up back into 120. So I hope this little excursion into chunks was helpful. Um, next week, we are going to talk about different strategies. Passages may need the metronome, some might need a tuner, some might need a recording of yourself. So there are different tools for different passages, and that's what we're going to talk about. Thank you for all your feedback uh, to the first video, and I'm definitely going to make sure that I'm going to take those questions that you had and make a nice little Q&A video out of it. Um, if you have any questions about this video or about how to learn a new piece in general, leave some comments below and I'll make sure to tackle those questions. Until next time.